we have some beautiful scenery here in Oklahoma. We do, we do. Don't we, CJ? And so a different approach to love, it also gives us a chance for the audience to see some of the different scenery that we have going on here in Oklahoma. To let you know, we're just not about cowboys and horses and tumbleweeds. Okay, uh, with me today is CJ Perry. Mr. Mellow Mellow is who he is. <laughs> <laughs> and he's agreed uh, to come on and discuss uh, his different approach to love. He is married. How, how many years? 18. Ooh, we gonna like talking to you. Yeah. And maybe you could give some couples uh, some ideas from whichever question that you're going to let us know you selected. Uh, some things that help them continue to take these different approaches in their relationship uh, with their wives or spouses and, you know, a significant other. So I'm going to read the nine questions. Y'all know how it goes. And then I have no idea which question he's decided on. So here we go. What would be the first initial approach to begin interaction with a potential love interest? In your case, uh, what different approaches are you continuing to take uh, in your 18-year marital relationship with your wife? Do, are you continuing friendship, surveying each other to see if the chemistry is still there? Do you try to avoid intimacy sometimes? i got to alter the questions just a little uh, for him. Um, do you to avoid intimacy altogether sometimes? Um, and for what reasons do you do that uh, in this 18 year relationship? What are some of the different approaches that can be applied or uh, that you are applying in this relationship? How about love by the numbers and other metaphysical approaches like astrology and compatibility charts are you any of either of you into that? Um, how did you determine when it was time to uh, make it an official relationship when you first uh, surveyed her as a, as a love interest? Um, what level of maturity were you looking for in that love partner? Did you change up any of the normal expected questions? Did, you just started out like uh, with, uh, and I'm gonna say her name because I know and love his wife, uh, come out yeah. You just start out with, so tell me a little bit about yourself. I know you did. So, but, uh, <laughs> uh, to something, did you change it to something that immediately addressed uh, a priority of yours that um, you wanted her or your potential partner to have like her characteristics, her personality, or some other expectation of yours that she had to meet. And lastly, did y'all make an agreement just to not impress each other and just be your natural selves? Which one of the nine? I, I think I would like to speak to the intimacy question. Number three. So you, you rephrased it. Yes. But I think I want to address it from the way that it was presented to me initially. Okay. Do we try to avoid intimacy altogether until a decision is made to become a couple? And so I, I'm, I'm choosing that one because I think, well, let me say this before I start going in. Um, I think all the questions have some you know interest to me and this one I'm choosing because I think I might be able to bring something unique okay um, to the conversation and you know the hope is that there's some value that somebody listening might be able to pull from it um, so in our relationship we currently have um, what people would say is a, a polyamorous relationship. Um, and with that, there's the potential for 
us to engage in relationships with other people, right? Uh, intimate relationships with other people. And this particular question, in terms of the intimacy, I think is, is important. Not only, you know, if it's a polyamorous relationship, it's a monogamous relationship, I think in general, there's a lot of importance that needs to be given to that. Um, so, I currently, if I was to engage in a, or pursue somebody else outside of my core uh, marital relationship that I have with the comedy, um, I do have boundaries that I create before I would engage with that other person. Um, so those boundaries are specifically, I do not engage in, in sexual penetration and even before looking at physical intimacy, um, I often want to, I, I try to keep certain things in mind. So whenever I'm engaging with somebody, I, I recognize that whenever there's any kind of fluid exchange, okay. there's going to be a certain a, a heightened bonding that can take place, okay. right? So as energetic beings, we are beyond our body, right? Yes. Our energy, yes. our energy, is, you know, is, is not contained in, in this physical, right? People speak to auras and things like that. Exactly. That um, are, aren't, you know, contained in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So there's always going to be a certain level of exchange that happens with anybody we come into contact with. Exactly. Even if it's not actually physically touching, okay. we're getting close enough to where there's going to be some energy exchange happening, right? Okay. Um, but whenever you have fluid exchange, there's chemical exchange that takes place as well. Okay. And, and can you be a little bit more specific uh, with the chemical exchange? Sure, and sure. before you even go into that, you and your wife have a very unique relationship in terms of um, your community involvement if you could kind of in like I mean you know your artist she's an artist I mean you know kind of tell us give us a little description of that relationship and how it transitions into uh, the type of relationship that has been the two of you have been sustaining for 18 years so we have we have two children. Um, two wonderful, beautiful girls. Um, two two little girls. So a lot of what we we do in terms of the community is very much in mind with how is this going to impact our children, right? So it's 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 very important that what we do and how we engage is is going to support and uplift them and provide a community or help to provide a community to allow them to move throughout life easier, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So we're intentional about who we engage with. Um, she is an artist, uh, so she goes by the name of Changing Frequencies. Yeah and uh, she's a hip hop artist, um, among other things. But, so that puts her in the public yes. a little more than it may typical, you know, for a typical lay person. But, um, so there's certain precautions or certain considerations, I, I would say, that we have to consider with that being the case. Um, Are you always there? with her, I mean, how, how do y'all interchange these roles and then get back to the 
specific chemical uh, <laughs> okay so um, well let me let me ask you to, to explain with your question make, make sure I understand what you're asking no you're, you're explaining it you're giving a little bit more insight into the uniqueness of your relationship uh, all together uh, and the complexity within that relationship sure. because you're artists right, right. both of you are artists you your parents mm -hmm. so and you're in uh, you're not in a basic traditional relationship sure in the manner in which you're carrying that relationship out so I just wanted the for the audience to know how unique that relationship is because you're an artist she's an artist and the children are very artistic, sure. uh, so on and so So you're answering the question, you're providing the information. Just some context. Just some context, and then we can, and then I want you to just go right on back into, you know, right. where you well, picked up. We both support each other in our different artistic expressions um, in, in different ways. Right. So I take on a more ma managerial role as far as her as a, performance artist, um, but am I always there when she's performing? No. Um, is she always there when I'm out in the in the world doing things artistically? Not That's not the case, but there's enough support with the community and how we have established some things that it doesn't need to be that way. Because you do a lot of textile art, correct? I do. Um, I, I enjoy creating things that can be used, and and uh, so you know, from clothing to hats and accessories, um, I enjoy engaging in, in that kind of artistic yes. expression. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Now, so back to this the chemical exchange. The chemical exchange. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Um, so, in our saliva, in our bodily fluids in general, you're going to have our chemicals involved. So, hormones um, are, are present. These things can influence the attachment that you might have to another person. Okay. So, um, when you understand that, you can be more aware of how you may engage with somebody. So, to give you an example, um, if you get with somebody and off the bat you are exchanging fluids, so that may that may be, you know, mouth, you know, oral exchange. It can be. Um, it can be. Um, you know, based on your, your, just whatever it might be. If right. you're exchanging fluids, right, right. it's going to heighten the, the level of bonding potential, right? Okay. So when you hear people talking about they got turned out, a lot of times it's their response to that chemical exchange. Okay, within the intimate but within the intimate interaction. Okay. So, well, let me ask you this before I keep going, because I don't know how, you know, <laughs> PG this needs to be. Oh, uh, um, hey, uh, this, you this know, is not so, for children. Uh, okay. Uh, so, when I upload it to the channel, okay. I do select not intended Okay, well, I just want to make sure before yes, I, I yes, go in. Yes, 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 yes. This is all adult. All right, all right. All right. Grown <laughs> folks. Grown folks. So, so, a lot of times, people will engage with another person and feel comfortable if, you know, maybe they say, all right, I'm willing to open mouth kiss, or I'm willing to have um, oral sex with this person, or I'm willing to, you know, have, have vaginal sex with this person. Um, whatever the case is, whenever the fluids are allowed to exchange, you may leave that exchange with a more intense attraction and attachment to that individual 
And biologically, my understanding is that that is intended to help that union to stay together. Okay. Right? Okay. 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 Now, a fluid chemical exchange is not going to sustain a relationship by itself. Intimately. Right. Okay. Right. Or, or in general, or right? In general. Okay. However, it can create a, a heightened excitement and bond initially that can be a, can be a, a tool or it can be helpful to move you through. So a lot of times people may use the term honeymoon phase. Yes. Right? So right. when people are first together, they have this time when the relationship is new, the new relationship energy that happens. And once that kind of dies down, the rose-colored glasses, per se, mm -hmm. can, oh. can come off, <laughs> come or, off. Or, or are coming off, right? Yes. Yeah. And you see the person in a way that you see the flaws that you may not have seen before, um, or you may not have paid attention to, or, you know, be concerned about. Um, things that it may just be a little nitpicky thing that before you weren't really tripping on, mm -hmm. now it's, it's getting to you, mm -hmm. right? Or the, the, the work that communication brings to a relationship right. may not have the, the importance at the very beginning because the excitement is, is so much there and the intimacy physically can, can drive the type of interaction that you have with that person. So is this why we should uh, put it off because of all of these things that come into play, the newness, the and, and, and you, you know, with everything that you're speaking of, that can kind of like mess it up if you go straight into being intimate? I, I would say this. I think each individual is going to come to the situation differently because they're going to come with their own experiences and history, baggage if you will, and the more you know yourself, the better you are able to interact with somebody else, in my opinion, right? So this is something I put in place for me. Um, I can't say that everybody should hold off in that way. If you know yourself and you know I've exchanged it with fluid and, and I don't, you know, that's not something that is going to affect me as much, then right. it may not be something you need to worry about. Okay. But for me, it's something that I know I want to put uh, a barrier on. I want to I want to be able to get to know you a little bit more yes. in, in a way that I'm not clouded by, my perception is not clouded because I'm, good, I'm, you know, super excited yeah. about you know, getting in your drawers, if, you, if, that, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, and there's it's, a while. <laughs> it's more for me and what my standards are okay. than something that I think is just a blanket rule that I would prescribe to everybody. Okay. And now, as you're describing all of this, are, are these things that you and Akamaye, um, how long did you all know each other before uh, you decided that it was time to, you know, uh, we could go ahead and be intimate now? Okay. Yeah, I don't know exactly how long. So, we, we met and became close friends and it was not an intimate relationship. Um, was it more than a year when you say close friends? I would say yeah, it was it was it was more than a year. It's probably um, maybe three three years or so, two three, if, if not maybe four. Yeah. Um, so where was the turn with the two of you when you decided that okay, now's the time to get intimate because she's going to become your partner or? Well, so because we were friends, we knew each other well, right? Mm -hmm. So. When I approached her as a potential 
intimate, you know, romantic partner, we already had established a foundation, you know, for our relationship. So it wasn't so much a, a thing where I'm trying to hold off because I don't know you like that. Right. Because I already knew her. Right. Um, so whenever we became intimate, um, it was it was me approaching her and expressing an interest in a romantic relationship. Mm -hmm. And when that when I engaged her in that way, and and she was receptive, you know, we moved forward. Um, you know, I don't know how soon. I mean, so I I I'll tell you like this. So. To, to kind of give you the story. Yeah, yeah, because I'm like, how did you turn that friendship? Right, right. And, and make it turn that corner. Right. And and everything. Yeah. So, um, so we were friends. Like I said, we actually met through music. Uh, we were both uh, making music and in a group together. And I had a crush on her. And at the time, so she's she's four years older than I am, right? And we met. I was. I think 17, 18, and she had a certain maturity and, ex you know, just just knowledge that, you know, that I didn't have, right? So in a lot of ways, she was schooling me and putting me on to things that I wasn't aware of, right? right? And whenever I saw that, I knew I wanted to be quote unquote equally yoked. Mm -hmm. So because I didn't feel as if I was at the same playing field, I wanted to get my stuff together. I wanted to up my game intellectually, uh, culturally, so that I felt like I brought as much to the table as she did. Okay. So I kind of ease back and I didn't express this interest in a romantic relationship until I felt like I had something to offer. Okay, okay. So at the time, um, I was in the School of Metaphysics and one of the exercises that I was doing um, in school was uh, a Tim Most Wanted list. Okay. And the Tim Most Wanted list is uh, a creative visualization exercise. So you are to list these 10 things and visualize the manifestation of them, right? Yes. yes. And I said, you know what? I've been single for a while. I want a relationship. I applied this Tim Most Wanted list to my pursuit of this relationship. Okay. At the time, I wasn't even thinking about her. It okay. was just, you know, because I kind of had let that go. Right. Um, but I knew I wanted to, to, you know, be in a relationship. So I, I listed 10 things that I wanted in a partner, mm -hmm. and then I listed 10 things that I felt like I brought to the table. Okay. Right? Okay. And um, like I said, because we were friends, I, you know, happened to call her up. You know, we ended up going out to Riverside, you know, something similar to this. Uh, um, beautiful. And, you know, we were just kind of hanging out, mm -hmm. and I was – you know, excited to tell her about my Tim Most Wanted list, right? Right, right, right. I mean, because, like I said, we, we were, like, friends. best friends, so yeah. best if friends. I got something going on, you know, I'm, I'm excited to share, vice right. versa, you know, that kind of thing. Uh-huh. Um, so, when I am telling her this Tim Most Wanted list, I'm like, hold on, you fitting, you know, you fitting my list, you fit the right. criteria. Right, right, right. And, and, and all the, the, the past emotions that I had to, towards her as far as my interest in a romantic relationship kind of, you know, came back to the surface. Okay. Um, so, after telling her what's on my list, um, you know, essentially I, you know, you know, ran, you know, approached her, kissed her, and that was the, the <laughs> moment that changed our friendship into yeah, something, Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 you put else. that put that bag of brown that's, sugar that's on her was. face. That's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, we definitely appreciate you. Uh, wow. Just like that, huh? Just you, like that. You, you're, <laughs> she, you, you, she's there as your best friend, being supportive. You're going over your 10 most wanted. You look up at her and you go, 
well, this is you. Right. And the look on her face is, well, yeah, that is me. And then you, you kiss her. That's that's pretty much that's, what it was. I mean, I, I felt like exchange me, of them fluids. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, to speak, I mean, it's it's interesting that it kind of comes together yeah. because she didn't necessarily see me as somebody who she was attracted to um, in a romantic way. And after the kiss, it put me in a different light. I'm and sure that it did. <laughs> so, so I would imagine that the, the fluid exchange de definitely played a, a part in that. Yeah. Oh yeah, because she told me about it. She told me all about it. She told me, boy, after that kiss, she left her body. <laughs> Am I telling on you? Come out yet? Don't, 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 don't hold it against me, sis. Don't hold it against me. I just, you know, he already know. Yeah, whenever she said, "Wow," she knew. After that kiss, she knew. So that's a pretty good wow to just be best friends. You wasn't even thinking about intimacy or anything, and then you you get into uh, metaphysical school. Uh, which also does slightly address one of the questions of, you know, the astrological, uh, but from the end of a metaphysical approach with visualization. Um, and I'm sure you were very surprised that she fit that list. I wasn't surprised, um, but it, it, it wasn't at the forefront of my attention. You know, I didn't make the list thinking about her. I know, you know I know, I mean? but so, it immediately yeah. opened up that door where the intimacy that uh, you hadn't, neither one of you hadn't been thinking about or, or whatever was kind of like on a, on a hold that neither one of you were aware of. And then when you became aware of each other, it was, you know, you knew that you could go forward into an intimate zone. I mean, I, I was hoping, you know. I mean, I, I could have got rejected, but she, I mean, you, <laughs> you know, know, something about yeah, that, yeah. something about that pull in to the to the lips, to to the to the bag of sugar. You you know, you know, we do, we you, do. We, your, we, your we, brothers we do. try to make it happen. Our <laughs> men, they are very proficient at doing what they do, and we love that. Um, is there is there anything? Like say for instance, if someone else is in a particular, maybe in a relationship like uh, you and a Kamaye, I mean, 18 years, um, are there times when the two of you still in that relationship take intimate breaks uh, from each other? And I mean, because th is there some type of uh, a foreplay between we're still just best friends and you know, you carry out uh, certain activities and things like that with each other, interactions with each other, where that's more important than realizing that your spouses and and you have the, um, you know, you have you have that opportunity to select when you're intimate, who you're intimate with, and not. I mean, you know, what kind of yeah, interplay yeah. goes on with that? Um, I don't think that we've ever intentionally taking a break from intimacy or, or physical intimacy um, I think there's times when there's a ebbs and flows and we're we're more or less intimate but we've never been intentional about it um, so it's not planned right right and I, I feel like there's a um, there's a natural flow, yeah. you know, because we do work together and we do engage in business activities together. It does dictate that we relate to you know each other in a certain way. So we're not in the business meeting, you know, all hugged up and you know all that right. kind of stuff. So right. I mean, yeah, there's a certain just a natural appropriateness and, and a flow that we You're in it, you know we move in. Yeah, but um. Yeah, I don't think it's something that we go about saying, okay, we're not going to be intimate here, or we are going to be here, or we're going to pause or start, or, you know, it's, it's more just as we, you know, move and, and engage and walk through our, our, you know, life together, you know, things will come up and we have to adjust and, and 
move accordingly. That, you know, um, that sounds kind of, you know, it, well, it's not just kind of, it's very, very rare uh, that couples can interact like that, coming straight out of just being best friends, uh, then going into, uh, you know, where y'all y'all took it all the way to the I do. Mm -hmm. You know, what what was that like? You know, taking it from this intimacy that you weren't focused on into now y'all have spotted each other and y'all know, you know, it's who each other are in that right. respect, and then to move it further. So. It's, it's interesting. So, um, so she didn't want to get married. Okay. Um, to anybody ever, because she a, a, attached or, you know, she she saw marriage as a way that she would potentially get locked down. Okay. You know, um, I mean, we live in a, a patriarchal society, and this. You know, this is that type of structure can make it easy for men to kind of dominate and dictate relationships and, and things like that. So she had a, a concern that marriage as an institution would impose certain boundaries and limits and, and things like that on her and, and you know me for that matter. So as as I proposed. Um, the conversation then became about polyamory and, and you know what does that look like you know um, and this was a concept that she introduced to me okay because I was going to ask you were you ready for that um, so when I when I was processing the idea of being able to see other people I think my initial reaction was like absolutely you know it's like that's it, it, uh, it don't get no better than that right <laughs> um, but there's a lot more to it I mean there's right. a lot of right. work that goes into it um, it's not easy and I definitely have been very selective and in, in, you know if and in, in who I may you know pursue if, if you know I was considering that with somebody else. So initially, I think it was just the, the idea and the excitement of, you know, the idea of being able to, to engage in somebody in a relationship, you know, intimately with somebody else. While being married. Right, right. Um, so I was all for it. But again, as the relationship grew, you see what it takes to, to make that happen. Yeah. And it wasn't something that we engaged in well, uh, that I engaged in initially or, or immediately, um, that didn't happen till you know years down the line. Yeah. You, I mean, it never bruised your ego at all that your significant other wanted to, you know, remain in a state, have that type of status and freedom, and 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 still want to have you by her side and. and share her life with you and the two of you share your lives with each other, your ego wasn't, you know, like some men like, oh no, you, not my woman, that's my woman. You know, we get into this possession right. of like, right. you know, you just bought something. Mm -hmm. uh, your, it didn't bother your ego at all? It didn't, it didn't hurt your feelings when she, <laughs> when she told you? hurt my feelings yeah um so i would say this no absolutely my ego was involved oh, it was not on. something that i was all you know excited yeah. about yeah. um no it's, it, it was very challenging but because we were friends before mm -hmm. i had i i had no known her to be in other relationships so it wasn't new to me um and even at the time she had a, a, a certain type of relationship with another gentleman. And it was something that I was aware of and, you know, had my 
my challenges with and, and you know, work through in the ways that, you know, I did. So, so no, I mean, it wasn't easy um, by any means. And, and I definitely, you know, had times where I was in my feelings about it. Um, but I think the, the biggest factor that assisted or even allowed me to accept the idea was that, so I, we were coming from the, a, a, a cultural place where freedom and sovereignty yes. and the liberation of our people was something that we valued and, and worked towards. So in my mind, I'm thinking like, okay, if I value liberation, I value freedom, what sense does it make for me to, on a community level, be pursuing that kind of, uh, you know, value, and then in my personal relationships, I'm, you know, I'm locking it down, and I'm, you know, doing something that's contrary to that. So, for me, I felt like it was a contradiction for me to even look at my personal relationship in a way where I'm going to be, you know, trying to control what you're doing. And I looked at it like, okay, it's a challenge. So if you are with me and you choose to be with me every day, then that is your choice. Right. And I've earned that. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if you choose to step away, then whatever your reasons are, there was something that I didn't bring to the table. There was some, There was a reason for you needing to go elsewhere. And not to say it's a bad thing, you right, know what I mean? Right, right. But my goal is, if I can stay on point enough to keep your attention, I don't have to worry about, you know, all the other options. Right. You know what I mean? Just keep doing what you do. If I, if I, if I hold the standard, yes. you know, then somebody else has got to step up. Because I mean, what can't nobody step up to the, to the, to the? I, I mean, you took a woman that was totally against marriage, and she married you. She, yeah, she yeah. married you. She she married you. So there's that in itself says a lot about the type of confidence that she has in you as a best friend uh, to enter into that type of arrangement. Uh, and it's been going strong for 18 years. And uh, for those of us here in Oklahoma that uh, knows this family, uh, are close to you, you're loved everywhere you go. I mean, you know, yes, you know, we know there are others. Uh, you know, y'all can say what y'all want to say about Oklahoma, the Oak. <laughs> The heartland, baby, if you want cowboys, <laughs> you want Native Americans, it's very seldom you can find tumbleweeds now, right? We, I, I haven't I seen a tumbleweed see yeah. in a minute. Yeah. Uh, the Oklahoma, um, we have a lot to offer. We really do. I think so. We really do. And we so. do have a cultural community. And within that cultural community, it's been my pre uh, pleasure and honor to to associate with you and your wife, and to be recognized by your your daughters who greet me and you know hug me with love, and they they're my I, I consider y'all my little magical family, yeah, you know, because yeah. one of your daughters, you know, she wants some, she just speaks it in the beat. <laughs> you know, um, and so I appreciate you coming onto the show um, and being very candid and mellow. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I knew this was going to be a mellow segment, you know, because I'm telling you, everywhere you see this man, he's mellow, always mellow. That's you know, not your, the case, but well, that's, that's all, all I've right. ever seen. You know? That's all I've ever seen. I've only, only, always seen. I've heard about them other not instances. All, not all the time. I've heard about the other instances. But I try to keep myself together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you do a, a wonderful job. Well, I appreciate um, it. 
we appreciate you and your wife and your children for being who you are in the community um, and being intentional with the programs that you do. Tell us, uh, before we get ready to get out of here, tell the audience about some of the, the programs that you, you have going on, you know, her programs, you know, the programs you're doing together so that they can get another feel. And if any of you could utilize their services, um, then you can tell them how to get in contact with you as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, my wife, she's a hip hop artist. You can find her on all social media. Um, Changing Frequencies is her name. Um, so we have that in terms of you know releasing and performing music. But right now we're actually really trying or working at bringing all of our different activities into one focal point. And the organization that we're in the process of developing is called LOVE. Um, it's an acronym which stands for Legacy of Valuable Education. Um, hold up, hold up. Yes. Don't, just, don't just love. And that acronym is again what? Legacy of Valuable Education. Wow. And I know your, your Akamaye is an acronym. Yes, specialist. yes she is. <laughs> you can give her a word and she will flip it. That is phenomenal. I love that. Thank you, thank you. So, the, the organization, uh, the first really flagship project that we're working to get off the ground is creating a makerspace mm -hmm. in Ward 7 of Oklahoma City um, metro area. And um, for those, you know, that don't know what a makerspace is, you know, y'all can Google it and, and, and there's a lot of information out there. but. Essentially, we're really wanting to create a, a makerspace in our community for the purposes of getting us back into the place of being a creator and producing the things that we need for ourselves instead of, you know, just being consumers. That's awesome. Well, there you have it, C.J. Perry. You got it. A different approach to love. Now I got one thing I need you to do with What's me. What's up? Can you say, be different and love it? Say I can. It. Say it. <laughs> be different and love it. All right. And I'm going to say, be different and love it. And look forward to our next segment. Uh, who it knows? Be, I'm with trying to get your lovely wife on this next segment. Thank you for joining us. Peace and blessings. And I want to give a shout out to Hardaway Production. And I want to give a shout out to WNT Network, NT9 Talk Radio. Um, love you all. Peace and blessings. It's the Deborah Show. Thank you. What you think? I love it. All right. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you coming in for your intro? Come on, come on. Another segment with the Deborah Show. Shot by Hardaway Productions. It was enlightening. Good stuff, man. Appreciate it. Way surprised you, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, he surprised me. Well, that's good. I was totally, I didn't know what what was going to happen. But anyway. I keep an open mind, so nothing yeah. surprised me. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hardaway. Eric exactly. Hardaway. In the building. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. If you ever need a videographer, look him up. Eric Hardaway, Hardaway Productions. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Signing off. Thank yeah. you. Oh, that was awesome, CJ. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, 